One of the things that I love is that two films idea of your life. And there's like two stories you can tell. One that is safe and full of regret, and one that is risky and full of pride and joy. So this is uh, for the Wales football team tonight. And the whole of Wales, of course. And for the non-conformists who had to worship here in secret because otherwise they were persecuted until 1649. And for these stones. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to take our bags off. Uh, we, we started at five o'clock this morning to come here, but we've been walking for four days from the source of the River Tavy, and it's been an incredible way to come and see you all here. And we've come to talk about pilgrimage. Now, we live in a world where we're told, and we see all around us, this increasing connectivity. You know, your, your phone can talk to your car, and your car talks to your radiator, and it can put your kettle on, and it knows what your bank balance is, and your boss can watch you all day long. And yet, we also live in a world where there's this increasing disconnection. Our food sources, we, you know, we go to supermarkets, we get little packets, we eat it. We don't think about where it comes from. We turn on a tap, get our water. Don't think about where it comes from. We never have to feel the burden or carry it. We go to the toilet, and uh, it all comes out. Well, where does it go? What do we do? <laughs> we, we know we have communities that have, uh, have sort of done this a bit, where we have... Families that are, are separated by a, a long way. We, we, it's, things have moved. They've moved in a way that we can't foresee where they're going. And we didn't know they... And it's all great. But we still have that need. We still have that need to, to go back to what it is to just be simply human. So into that, we are bringing the P word. And it's a difficult word. I mean, I can't even spell it half the time. Uh, people have an amazing difficulty in even saying it. You know, oh, say, enjoy your walk. You say, no, it's a pilgrimage. And they just don't want to say it. There's a real, a very real reaction that happens against it. People think pilgrimage is, is hard work. I couldn't do it. They think uh, it's old fashioned. It's out of date. It doesn't exist anymore. Why would I do it? They think it doesn't do anything. Um, they might react to the, the idea that it's, it's religious in some way. Um, but actually, the word is, just means through the fields, per aga. So it's a, it's a wonderful word, but there's this taboo. And we believe that the taboo has come from, well, it's big in Spain. It's big in France. A lot of you may know of the Camino de Santiago, the Compostela. And why is it not happening here? Well, 450 years ago, Henry VIII, the big king, Banned pilgrimage. Not many people know that, but it was made illegal. You know, he had his efficient steel of Thomas Cromwell, and people were disemboweled, hanged and burned to say no more pilgrimage. And the infrastructure of these monasteries where pilgrims could stay and eat for free as they journeyed on foot around Britain was totally dismantled. And now in, in Britain, pilgrimage was the original holy day, the holiday. It was the only way that a lot of people could drop their tools and do anything apart from work for their liege lord their whole life. It was this opportunity for freedom. And when that ended, well, here we are today, basically. Um. But what are we talking about? I mean, what is, what is pilgrimage? How do we... It's been, an, it's been an absolute journey to come to this definition, so I hope you're ready for it. It's an unbroken journey on foot to holy places. Now, there are a few words in there. Can we let we that sink to... a sec? Let us just... just, just... Unbroken journey, on foot, holy places. Simple. It's a very simple thing. And anybody can do it. Now, why unbroken? Why unbroken? Why unbroken? Good point. Well, the deal is, if you're making a pilgrimage and you get in a car halfway through, your pilgrimage effectively stops. I mean, we can't explain why, but that is the simple truth of how it works. It starts again as soon as you get out. It's all about the dedication to this destination. Maybe if we break it down a bit more into uh, the terms. Because holy is a difficult word. I know a lot of people think 
that's not for me, that's going to involve someone slapping me with a cross or, uh, <laughs> you know, things that aren't very popular today for a lot of people. Um, but it doesn't have to mean anything like that. Uh, if we go take the words back to their root, holy comes from the old English word halig, which is the same word as used in Scotland as in hail, as in hail and hearty. Wholesome. You know, what places do you find wholesome? I bet every single one of you, if I asked, do you have a place, a special place, where you'd like to go to, or that you do go to when you, to feel better, that's a holy place. There's, there's, there's no reason why we need to apply labels, because everyone has their own individual relationship with the land. And so it's, it's not just a wholesome place. The word also comes from healthy and holistic. So there is no religious specification required. Why do we go on foot? Be well, it's very slow. Very um, slow. Some people think four, four <laughs> miles an hour. We like to say two because you get twice the benefits. You go, you, you immerse yourselves in the land. You can see like wild strawberries in the hedge or, or, or a herb that you need to make your feet feel better. Or you can walk slow enough so that when you meet someone, you can actually stop and talk to them. Whereas if you're going on a bike or a car, you can maybe wave at them, but you can't certainly stop and talk and get to know the people of the land, especially if you're in a, a different land. And we have been the last week. We've been in Wales, obviously, which is different in some ways to England, but you know it's the same, but also subtly different. So you get this incredibly um, localised understanding of the place that you live and you're walking through. You're a foreigner in your own land. So there's a number of ways that making pilgrimage can help you connect more deeply to yourself, first of all. When you're making pilgrimage, when you're striving towards this distant place, well, it doesn't have to be that distant, it can be half an hour away, you know. It doesn't need these multiple weeks, multiple days. But anyway, when you're striving towards that, you connect with yourself in the simplest way. You connect with the health of your body. You, you see a hill, and it's not this glassy image on a computer or behind a car windscreen. You connect with it with your back, with your legs, with your breath, and you strive. And it's, it's a small but really significant victory to reach the top. And it becomes a holy hill because you've encountered it on pilgrimage. And it you just don't, works you, like that. You don't always know what, you know, the, the physical things that happen, obviously, but the emotional things that happen, the things get sort of like churned up by walking. And, and, and especially if you're walking with someone else, you have little, little mirrors going on. No, you on. don't. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's a way of really connecting with Mm. forgotten bits of, of yourself that may just come out because you you see something. I was looking at it, I was walking down the road a couple of days ago and um, this car turned and, and these, these other cars didn't know what to do and, and, and I thought and, and I saw the sign and I was like and, and, I, and it said, you know, cars turning so be, be aware. I was like, do I do I look at the signs in my life enough? So I started thinking that. And do I read my emails enough? You know, for some reason, there's the, you, you see um, sort of analogues in nature in a way that, that, that you can't get from normal life. I don't, I don't know how it works, but it does. We don't often walk on roads, just to clarify that. One of the beautiful things about making pilgrimage is that you don't have to use any of these, well, you do use a lot of them, but the networks that we rely on in modern life, you know, the sewage system, the water network, the, the supermarket and the car park and the roads, you can leave them all behind to a degree. There's this freedom to sleep under that tree over there and to drink your water from that river over there. And we've been drinking a lot of Tavy water on the way. You have a little mm. filter, uh, which really works. We've had ones that don't work and oh, yeah. you, you really you, 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 lose, <laughs> yeah, you, lose, you lose a lot of weight, which some people like. But, um, but, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> but actually, in the old sort of traditions of spiritual traditions, we all know about fasting, but Purging is largely lost in Britain. At the beginning of a pilgrimage, being <laughs> sick for three days, it really opened something up. It really worked. But <laughs> all this dream, uh, I, I was, like most people nowadays, behind a laptop for a long time doing a PhD um, a few years ago. And I hadn't met Will by that point. It was about three years ago. And... I, I, I came, I was, I was just looking in my laptop and I really wanted to get beyond the 13 inch screen and out into the, the big, the miles wide um, space. And I met, them, I met Will at a dinner party that I wasn't invited to. And, and then a year later, I finished my PhD and I was like, I 
I've just got to go. I've got to get out. And I didn't know what was going to happen and certainly wasn't thinking of pilgrimage at that point. And I was doing... I spent the last 10 years trying to revive wandering minstrelsy in Britain, making these really long singing walks, singing for our supper with another, another couple of friends, trying to see if that worked in Britain today. And it does work really well, but very few people can take six months, eight months, nine months on these really long journeys. So it was, it was all sort of exhibition stuff I come to it. It was, look at me, we can do this. And it's great to inspire, but that's you just change yourself and people witness it. But really to help participatory activity, pilgrimage, can open up the, the wonders of this tradition in a way that wandering minstrelsy really doesn't. So Guy and I got together and we thought we'd try and make a pilgrimage. And rather than make a traditional sort of let's go to a cathedral, we made a pilgrimage to a song. That was our first destination. We sung uh, this song uh, uh, from the first night around the campfire all along the routes. Anyone who was on the routes, so they had no choice, they had the song. Story, um, story. The story of the song. The story, so, oh yeah, the, sorry, the song. <laughs> song. It was about 37 gypsies and um, Irish um, hot pickers and Irish um, gypsies uh, who got brushed, as, uh, washed into the, the river and um, by this bridge called Heart, the Heart Lake Bridge. And there was a song that was written about the, the tragedy. And when we got there, there was this couple by the, the monument to, the, to all of the, the 37 um, unfortunate souls. And... We were like, what are you doing? And they were, they said, well, we tried to come here 10 years ago, but we couldn't find it. Um, but now we're here, for, I mean, we're just about to go. And we're like, have you got some kind of connection? And they're like, yeah, <coughs> three of my family died in this tragedy. And I was like, have you heard the song? And they're like, no. So we thought we were taking the song back to the place. We were actually taking it back to its bloodline. And I think in that moment, we realized deep, a deep sort of, awareness that we, were, we tapped into very, very powerful form. It's the absurdly powerful connection of pilgrimage. By setting that destination, it all came together, you know. The, the coincidence of it, they were there for ten minutes, it took us seven days to get there. It's this perfect meeting. I mean, and that happened even on our journey here. We, we met a chap, he was driving past, stops, got, and we were looking at a war memorial in Kapildawi, and it turned out that we met him in, guide met him in London at a, a concert, and his dad is this famous heart maker. So just by being exactly at the right moment along the road as this chap, we managed to make contact with his father and go and tour this amazing, like one of the only people in the world, three people in the world can make a heart, proper heart, triple heart by hand from scratch. And, and there he is, the only one in Wales. And he, uh, Tyvee Harps, he's a clan Dissel and uh, well worth a visit. And last night we were in a pub and we met these, these Welsh um, old you know, grandees, and one of them was the only guy ever to have gone in a coracle across the channel. And he's really well known around here. Like, he's written the history of this area. Um, there are books in, in Cardigans about him. And, and Geraint Pillock, um, called actually Denzel Davis. And he, and he, we just got to interview him for 25 minutes. We just, the amount of things that happen is just, it, it, there we go, serendipity. It's, it's, it's a buzzword, but it, it just really does happen a lot on pilgrimage. So just to clear this up, pilgrimage, We've said what it is. Is it religious? If you want it to be, it's as religious as you like. You know, we have a catchphrase, bring your own beliefs. And what you look for, you find, really. Uh, it's absolutely open. Do not let the idea that it was once a big Catholic practice get in your way. It's, it's really free for the dream today. Because it was banned, there's this fallow period of 450 years. It's now ripe for renewal in any way that you require. And that is a tremendously powerful opportunity. And, and connecting with nature in this way. Um, you know, we don't have a shower, so we were bathing in, in the river. Um, we were filtering our water from the river. Um, taking poos in, in nature is it's a surprisingly enjoyable uh, experience. <laughs> um, uh, because you know that your, the goodness is going straight back into the land rather than into the sewage works. And, and rather than something you're shameful, you have to have an industrial network to put it away quietly where you can't see it. It's a gift. You're giving them <laughs> I mean, it just, it changes everything. Pilgrimage makes, it makes the land holy by you engaging with it in this way. Everything you do becomes part of this wonderful, powerful, beautiful experience. So why in Britain? Because, I mean, there is a big network in Santiago in France, but not in Britain. So why in Britain? 
And the answer is we have the best footpath network in the world. Nowhere else has these secret passages between all the, the great places. You don't have to walk on a road at all unless you're in a hurry. We were in a bit of a hurry to get here because we're here right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but we've but made it. But these footpaths are enshrined in our kind of highest law. So mm. it's very hard to sort of take them away. It's, mm. there are, in America, that's not the case. Mm. And, and much of the continent is not the case. So, and also, we're an amazing natural holy landscape, the, the, the wells, the springs, the ancient trees, the river sources, the hilltops, um, the prehistoric sites, the, and then the churches that have been built around, on these very kind of powerful sites, in, often in very picturesque um, s settings. You know, mm. it's an extraordinary landscape, and, and it's amazing. I mean, maybe it's the weather, but, but, uh, but it's, it is rather amazing that it hasn't taken off um, before now, and um, Mind you, it will. the weather, I mean... This is Wales. We said the guy came, walked by this without the jumper. He picked this up the other day. Uh, yeah. and we didn't bring waterproof jackets, you know. It, and it was fine. The weather is, is not an issue. If it does rain on you, it dries you too. The same sky that soaks you is the same sky that dries you. It's, uh, it, it's not a problem. You, don't, you never melt, I, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so why in Britain? Oh, yeah. When you make pilgrimage in Britain, you tell people you're a pilgrim. The land and the people remember. There's this, something happens when you say, oh, I'm a, what are you doing? I'm on pilgrimage. So there's that glimmer in the eye, and people strive to help you in this unexpected way. I mean, we, like, uh, we were walking the South Downs Pilgrim's Way from Winchester to Canterbury, a new route we'll talk about in a sec, and we are in Eastbourne, and we were hungry, and we had no money. We were doing it without money just to see if that worked, to see what that brought, and a chap saw us looking in a cafe longingly. And he came out and said, do you know what, lads? When I was down and out, no one helped me. So today, you can have this. And a big bag of food, you know. And instantly, as soon as we took it, this shambling drunk man come down the street and says, oh, I'm hungry, lads. So we just instantly got to like, complete this circle by giving him you know, a portion of the food. And just something happens, the circle of reciprocity, the sort of the giving and the helping, the hospitality network, which is inherent in everyone. And also the dissolving of social distrust. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, when we meet people and they say, oh, so they see this often. That, that, this is quite a good prop in many, in many different ways. Um, and they, they, they say, oh, you're, you must be a pilgrim. And oh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I should probably offer you a shower or oh, perhaps dinner. Or do you want to stay the night? And mm -hmm. do you want breakfast? And suddenly this, this whole thing's happened. And then you leave the house and they're like, I don't know what just happened. I, I've never done that before. Why did I, why did I just do that? And, and, you know, it's like it's a memory. You're, just, you're tapping into this, this powerful energy. And, but, you know, it's quite fun to do that. And, and, and it's certainly that, that ability to trust them, that they're not going to do something horrible to you in, in, their, in their place, or, and, and their trust that you're going to not do the same. It's really good because, you know, you start to believe that the world is better than you thought it was. Mm. So what we do, what we're doing, we have a charity called the British Pilgrimage Trust. And we are trying to promote the dream of pilgrimage. We're doing this in a number of ways through media, who's talking to these camera things, um, <laughs> through a website, britishpilgrimage.org. Pow, did it. Um, <laughs> um, we usually forget to do yeah, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and through, in the most obvious way, through doing pilgrimage. Well, really, we don't call it doing in truth, I'm afraid to say. It's more like making. It's a creative act, pilgrimage. You take a holiday, but you make a pilgrimage. Um, we, we're trying to... What, 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 uh, the thing that Santiago has that's incredible, these um, refugios and these hostels all around, um, all along the routes, for five to eight euros a night, uh, which means that anyone can do it. And they just go and they just... They, they don't even have to pay most of the time. They have donativos, which is just you just donate money. So we're thinking, is what's missing in England? And it's that. You know, we don't have that accommodation network. So we're, <coughs> we're on one of our pilgrimages, we were walking along the South Downs, and it was really stormy. It was in the winter. And we thought, maybe we should sleep in some churches. So we called up Vickers Church. was like, can we sleep in your church? And they're like, OK. And so we, we slept. And then we realized, gosh, if, if this became Britain-wide, this is just standard. It could really change rural, the rural landscape, the rural communities. There'd be people walking through, buying prod, local produce, going to the pubs. It would just completely reinvigorate our land. Because these churches are usually underused. 
I mean, and at night time, they're almost always entirely empty. And yet they're places where everyone historically in the local community was greeted when they were born, was celebrated when they joined together, and was bid farewell when they died and left. So there's this incredible community memory in these places. And the stone really retains something. And you go to sleep in them. It doesn't matter how you feel about the story of, of, of Jesus and, and all that. It doesn't matter because as you go unconscious, all of those irksome head things drift away. And you're just, you feel the place. <coughs> Next time you go into a church, try lying down. You know, just people don't do it. Close your eyes and lie down. It changes the place entirely. So we're working with the Church of England, and they are incredibly, surprisingly, up for opening up their churches for everyone. You don't have to be a Christian. You just have to be a pilgrim. <laughs> this was... <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, what else we got? What else are we doing? So another thing we're doing is we're working with new technologies. When we walk, we don't have big paper maps. We do use the clever telephones. And they tell you where you are. So you've got all the Ordnance Survey maps of Britain. And Very cheap. But just not really, really, really quite cheap, yeah. And they tell you where you are. It's like Harry Potter-ish, you know. It's, it's, I'm there. And that means, not that you need to walk <laughs> along, but that you can go and get lost. You just, let's, let's go up that hill there. Let's go and see what's up there. And you know that you will be able to find your way back to a footpath or a pub, or a village, or whatever you need later on. It's this incredible, liberating freedom. You, you, the land also, is yours again. And we're also really into old tech, like wool and, and wooden starves, and, and all that they do for them. These are great. So it's not just, it's not just a dramatic kind of cosmetic prop. It's like, Triple prop. It's like you can test the, the depth of puddles. You can like part seas of nettles. You can... Um, Apples off trees. You can... When you're going up the hill, you can sort of use it as an extra leg. Uh, you can stop yourself falling down to the hill. You can put up your tent using it. It's, it's basically you can do amazing things. We don't use tents, so just to clarify. What we've got is really oh, good yeah. modern, modern technology again. I'll go back to the new. We have this amazing, really lightweight tarpaulin system. So it's, you can get about three people under one. It weighs about 100, 200 grams, and you can see out in all directions. So this whole idea of being in a tent is hot stuffy nylon bubble, so every night you're in the same place. Get rid of that idea. Tarpaulins. I mean, so it's just a roof. So the rain is off your body, but you can see everything. So you, you hear that funny little noise, you know, in a tent, you think, oh my God, they're going to stab me any minute. <laughs> in a tarpaulin, you just look, and you find out it's a beetle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you, in, in the forests, you, the oxygen, you just get like... You know, if you're in oh. indoors for like a normal night sleep, you get, you know, shut the windows, maybe open them a bit. In, in the forest, you're like, the, the trees are pumping out oxygen, you just, and you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm ready to go. And you're like, why? And it's because you've been breathing all this really good air. And, mm. you know, it's, 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 a, it's a dream. Yeah. So the pilgrimage, it connects you, yeah? even sleeping, pooing, drinking the water, washing yourself, meeting the people, it all gives you this incredible connection to yourself, to other people to nature, and to the great question of, is there something greater than all of it? And the other, th the other big thing we're trying to do is to, to, to focus this into a flagship route, mm. the South Downs Pilgrim's Way, because the North Downs Pilgrim's Way, well, a third of it's on the M20. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's not quite what it used to be. Well, it was like, and, and it Henry Belloc be invented it, basically. In 1910, he found a, a bit, an old map, and he said, the Pilgrim's Way. So there's this story, the Pilgrim's Way. And it's kind of rubbish. It, I mean, it doesn't really work. The South Downs Pilgrimage Road, there's a map we found from 1290 called the Goff Map, and it's like Britain's first road map. And there's a little red line going from Southampton all the way to Canterbury, and that is Britain, South Britain's oldest pilgrimage route. So and we're uh, bringing that one right back. Along the routes, we're going to have these churches, and they're all going to be open, and it, the dream's going to become real. Mm. And... Um, and if you'd, you yourselves would like to make pilgrimage... Yeah, what you can do. Here we go. Well, there are many things you can do. You can just sort of do it, you know, mm. like... Um, you can just say, I'm going to do it, and that's going to happen, and it'll happen. Because um, people say that the destination, you know, there's a famous thing, it's not the destination, it's the way. Well, it's not the destination or the way, so much as the setting out in the first place that really counts. And so, from your home, Choose the place that you want to make your pilgrimage to. It can be anywhere. I mean, literally anywhere at all. If any distance, give the time you can. If it's half an hour, that 
is a, a sacrifice, which means making sacred, of half an hour of your time just to get there. Because rather than driving, you're giving your body energy, you're giving your time. It may be a little bit cold, you know, but you, you, you get out there and do it. You improve the way, you pick up the litter, you smile at the people you meet. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and it works. And we will be offering um, guided pilgrimages mm. along part of the, this beautiful part of the South Downs Pilgrimage Way in August. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, two, first two weekends of August, uh, yep, come along, please. Um, and at the end, on Sunday morning, we're going to complete with you. We say we do pilgrimages. We made a pilgrimage here from the source of the river Taibi to so far here. We're not complete. You're just a way, way point on the way. This, the sea is yonder, and that's uh, And we invite you to end. come with us. Yeah. On Sunday morning, we'll be making the final journey to the sea. So and we're it's not far, and, and we'll be going past some beautiful places, and we hope you'll, you'll join us there. And there's one other thing we like to do and say on pilgrimages, as well as just, I mean, the whole thing is a gift, because you're connecting these wholesome places with your football, with your body, with your time. But as well as that, carrying a gift, something to give freely, as much as you can, is is a great tip. And what we use is song. I mean, that's our sort of special secret weapon, really. Mm -hmm. And so for this journey, we, we learned the easiest possible come like song we could. Uh, we're not native Welsh speakers, uh, but Dwi'n Dusky Come Like, we're getting there. Uh, so <laughs> this song, which we just want to give to this place right now, if you don't mind, you don't get a choice, is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, is about goats. Um, <laughs> Multicoloured goats. Yeah, yeah. How are we going to do this? First verse. When and D. When, D. Uh, when and D, but two, two oys? Yeah. Okay. Ois gavreto, ois hebe gudro, ara kregiai gewen maia, hana avrun crue dro. Gavar, when, when, when. Yeah, when, 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 Us this we a hun fon di 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 gavar wen 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 ye fin wen fin wen 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 wen